This video provides setup information for the Holiday Coro Pixel Panel. This Pixel Panel display is designed for scrolling text and graphics. Now, they are available in two different versions. This is a 15 wide by 10 tall. We also sell an 18 wide by 9 tall panel too. Uh, those are both uh, applicable depending upon your particular uh, display. Now, several things to be aware of on the panels themselves. On the sides, you will see that there are some holes right here and right here and additionally up here. This allows you to combine two panels side by side and the gap information is listed on our website. So if you need additional panels, you can link them side by side and create multiple sections to create longer scrolling displays. Now, as also covered on our website, keep in mind the type of text that you'll be rolling across it and the number of pixels that you are going to need for your unit because they differ. Both of those designs are intended to be used with 8 millimeter nodes. These LEDs are 8 millimeters in diameter and then the base is 12 millimeters or roughly a little less than half an inch. These come in LOR style with a green wire. They may be three wires, they may be four wires, but all of these nodes are generally the same. The base is about 12 millimeters. Now, what you want to do is first lay out your panel. Now you're going to be installing them backwards, so whichever way is the way you decide to install them and have them coming out, you'll want to reverse that. Now, uh, what we have here is three layers of coro. We need three layers of coro, not one, not two, but three to ensure that we have good adhesion for the nodes. Now, before you start putting the nodes in, you will want to determine how you're going to lay them out. Now, when you lay them out, if we were looking at the back of the panel here, and this is where we're going to be installing our nodes, such as this, we would need to counter that, understanding that when we flip it over, what started over on the left hand side is now the far right hand side here. So, if we want to go, for example, bottom, over, back, and forth in a zigzag pattern, we'd want to reverse that to the other side when we actually put the nodes in there. So you may want to make some notations. Now, how you choose to put them in and in what order is really actually a function of your software and that software uh, will usually do some mapping. Now this mapping or zigzag will also sometimes be in controllers so you can set a particular zigzag pattern so you can say to the controller uh, I'm going to change direction every X number of nodes and it assumes that either you're going vertically up and down or that you're going horizontally. So, check with your manufacturer of your software or your controller, see if they support either a matrix option or a zigzag option, and worst case scenario is you just lay them out as is. Now, keep in mind, of course, pixels are addressed in the order that they're placed. So, these nodes, these pixels, uh, do not have any addresses. So, if this is my first starting pixel right here, that means that, for example, if I have it set up in my controller, it might be DMX channels 1, 2, 3, and this is 4, 5, 6, and so on. So, again, get it into the order that makes sense based on your software and hardware. So, if, let's say, for example, we want to start in the bottom left, we would put it over here in the bottom right, stick the node in there, and make it come through the front. You can see that it now sticks right through the front. And we would go across and then usually zigzag back and forth. Now, several things to be aware of with many kinds of nodes. In most cases, you will not be able to run continuous strings of nodes, either 150 or 160 some odd nodes, without power injection. How much power injection you need will depend on the nodes. So check with a vendor who sold you the nodes. Usually there should be some indication the longest length that you can run without power injection. So, at a minimum, if you ran the entire matrix here, you would need to start off by putting power at the very beginning, and as you get to the end, power injection at the end. It may require additional power injection. Again, that depends on your particular vendor. Now, also what you'll need to do is determine how much power you need overall. 
So, of course, how many nodes will affect your total power consumption? And each nodes are different, and there are 5 volts and there are versus uh, uh, 12 volt nodes, and each one has different power requirements. So, again, check with your vendor. If you decided on 150 nodes for the 15 by 10, great. Go ahead, look on their website, ask your vendor how much wattage on a power supply will it take to run those nodes. And in most cases, you're going to find you need um, 100 or so watts. So, for example, here we have a 350 watt power supply. This power supply obviously would power more than enough uh, nodes uh, for your particular display. Again, I mean your particular sign. You may again need to split off some of this power and re-inject power again depending on your design. Of course, when you purchase your power supply, it may or may not be waterproof. And again, this also all depends on your particular display. You may need to waterproof this power supply. Uh, we also sell rainproof power supplies if you want to use one of those. Uh, it will not be possible in any circumstance to use one of the smaller 45 watt power supplies uh, that will not provide sufficient power. All right, now, controllers. We allow you to use any kind of controller you want, and which kind of controller you want is really your personal preference. You can have a whole variety of different things you might use. You might want to use an LOR controller. Uh, with the CCR or CCBs, you may want to use our Tiny Picks, Easy Picks, uh, our Picks Lite, or any of the different particular pixel controllers on the market. Of course, these are obviously pixels because you're going to individually control them, so keep that in mind. So, which pixel controller you need to use is completely up to you. Cost complexity, software interfaces, and all that. If you are going to be using it, of course, make sure that you have some sort of waterproof uh, enclosure, not only for the power supply if it's not waterproof, but also for the controller. Now, some other minor things that you may want to consider are things like, and these are just ancillary, zip ties. So, when you're coming off, if you've got the wires coming down, most often what you want to do is put in what we call a pigtail, just a small little extension, it's waterproof. You would solder these wires, it may be three or four wires depending on your particular design. You want to solder those wires onto the permanent connection so that you can then disconnect that. How would you attach this pigtail to your sign? Just using the zip ties. Now, you also may need from that vendor uh, extensions. So for example here we have our uh, five foot extensions and those allow you to place it from a controller, for example, that you have further away if you have a more centralized controller. So, once you've installed all of your nodes into the panel, you simply just hook up the power supply to the particular controller you're going to be using, uh, then run your data connection to your controller, program in the particular pixel panel, into the software that you're going to be using. Again, we can't provide specific information because there are so many different versions of software and controllers on the market, and each one of those has differing options. If you have any additional questions that were not answered in this video when you go to set up your Pixel panel from Holiday Coro, by all means, please contact us at the Contact Us link on our website. Thanks.